Deadlines. We all face them every day. Things to do, places to be. Since 2016, the UK has been obsessed with one deadline in particular. Brexit. 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 It's a deadline that's been pushed back several times. We're leaving on the 29th of March. On October the 31st. By January the 31st. Now, after three and a half years of negotiations, it's finally happening. We are leaving the European Union. But although the UK is officially out, it now enters a transition period, which comes with its own deadlines. This is not an end, but a beginning. Now, the tricky part starts. By the end of 2020, Britain and the EU have to work out a whole new relationship, covering everything from finance to fish. And UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said he won't extend that deadline. But many analysts are already saying that, again, that deadline could be difficult to meet, and rushing things could potentially result in a messy, hasty separation. So when will Britain really be done with Brexit? If the past three years are anything to go by, it could be hard to tell. Britain's first self-imposed Brexit deadline was set in 2016. Through an in-out referendum on Thursday the 23rd of June. Cameron thought that setting a deadline would force people to choose so the country and his party could move on. Of course, we know the vote didn't go the way he wanted. The British people have voted to leave the European Union. But that didn't stop his successors from also using deadlines as a way to coerce consensus. There will be no unnecessary delays. And there can be no turning back. We must leave the EU on October the 31st. And if there's one thing we've learned from Brexit, it's that deadlines don't always stick. The United Kingdom is leaving the European Union. Prime Minister Theresa May lacked the support in Parliament to get the Brexit deal she negotiated passed into law, forcing her to go back to the EU and ask for extension. We will need a further extension of Article 50. After extension. I agreed an extension to the Brexit process to the end of October at the latest. Showing that without the backing of the UK Parliament, those deadlines don't mean very much. That's where Johnson comes in. And come out of the EU on October the 31st, no ifs or buts. Johnson replaced Theresa May in July, and the first thing he did, following up on a key campaign promise, was to enforce that deadline. Can you make a promise today to the British public that you will not go back to Brussels and ask for another delay to Brexit? Yes. And, sorry. I can. And would you I'd rather... rather be, I'd rather be dead in a ditch. But again, that didn't happen. Just like Theresa May, it was because he had no majority in Parliament. Lawmakers forced him to send a letter to Brussels requesting an extension. The new deadline was set for January 31st. His threat of a no-deal exit, with Britain crashing out of the bloc, was neutralised by Parliament. His solution? To call for a snap election. Vote for an election and let the people decide. Only after winning big at that election was he able to ensure his Brexit deal got through Parliament. And this time, finally meet that deadline of January 31st. There are now two deadlines on the horizon. The UK's transition period with the EU ends on December the 31st. And if it needs an extension, it needs to ask the EU by July the 1st. Analysts have said that it is likely the UK will be only partially ready by the end of December 2020. Just like during the Brexit negotiation, some EU leaders are already talking about a possible extension period. Without an extension of the transition period beyond 2020, you cannot ex expect to agree on every single aspect of our new partnership. Johnson's strong majority in Parliament means that lawmakers won't cause him to miss another deadline. But he may find that he's left himself too much to negotiate before the end of the year and decide to postpone. If recent experience is any guide, the UK's Brexit drama could be far from over.